Hey, it's your local fish keeper Sabrina. In today's video, we are going to dive into the world of figure eights and how I care for mine. When I first got into the black hole that is puffer fish, my very first puffer fish was a figure eight named Kachang. I had to rehome him unfortunately as he was giving me too much anxiety and stress at the time. Nothing was wrong with him and honestly he was a very healthy boy. But I was very new at fish keeping at the time and I had no idea how to properly set up a brackish tank. I felt really bad for keeping him and had to rehome him. Hopefully with this video you get to keep yours worry free. So let's start! The scientific name for a figure 8 pufferfish is a dichotomicter oscillatus or commonly known as figure 8 pufferfish or eye spot pufferfish. They're called figure 8s due to the patterns on their back. However, please note that their patterns differ and may not look like a figure 8 at all. So how do we identify them exactly? One of the easiest way I find is to look for the eye spots located on your back. Figure eights are often confused with their cousin, Dicotomicture fluviatilis, or the topaz or ceylon pufferfish, especially when they are young. The best way for me to explain is that topaz pufferfish looks like a mixture of a figure eight and a green spotted pufferfish. They do not have the distinct eye spot pattern that figure eights do. The care for a figure eight pufferfish and a topaz pufferfish differ greatly, so it is important to identify what species your pufferfish is exactly. Figure eight pufferfish can grow up to about 3 inches or 8 centimeters in size and can live up to 15 years. Like most puffer species, they are not sexually dimorphic and so far, the only way to find out if they are male or female is when they start breeding. Now let's get into the controversial part of today's video, which is their origin. Are they freshwater or brackish fish? Figure 8 pufferfish can be found in mangrove areas, estuaries, and streams in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Cambodia. According to local fishermen, they are commonly found in freshwater areas and can be found in brackish areas as well. However, the water they inhabit is very hard harder than any domestic plumbing system could take. If we were to keep them in regular tap water, they will struggle with mineral deficiencies which will eventually affect their immune system. Therefore, in the home aquarium, I find that it is best to keep figure 8 pufferfish in a brackish setup. Personally speaking, Gilbert's colors are much brighter and he seems to be much happier in brackish water. I keep Gilbert at a specific gravity of 1.008. Reminder, please use marine salt and not aquarium salt. You can use a refractometer to measure your water salinity or specific gravity. The following are the recommended tank parameters. Ammonia 0, nitrites 0, nitrates less than 20 parts per million, pH of 7.5 to 8.0, hardness of 15 to 25, specific gravity of 1.008, Temperature of 24 to 28 degrees Celsius or 75.2 to 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. I keep Gilbert in a 20 gallon or a 76 liters long aquarium. Of course, bigger is better. Figure 8 puffers appreciate a long aquarium rather than a tall aquarium. If you wish to keep more than one figure 8 puffer fish, I'd recommend adding 15 gallons or 57 liters more for every puffer fish. The basic equipment you will need in order to set up a figure 8 pufferfish tank is your tank of choice with a secure lid on top, filters, lights, a heater, and a refractometer. You will also need a water conditioner or dechlorinator to make your tank water safe, and of course marine salt to make brackish water. Let's start from the top with cycling a brackish aquarium. You can begin by cycling your tank at specific gravity of 1.008 straight away. 
I highly recommend doing a fishless cycle. If you're wondering why add specific gravity of 1.008 and not lower, to put it simply, at specific gravity of 1.005, freshwater beneficial bacteria starts to die off. Brackish water's beneficial bacteria is much more similar to that of salt water. Specific gravity of 1.008 is a safe and stable condition to cycle a brackish tank. You can use a refractometer to measure your water salinity or specific gravity, and you can use a test kit to monitor your levels. Congratulations! Now that you have a cycled brackish tank, let's discuss substrates and tank decorations. The best substrate to use for these critters is sand with pH buffering properties such as aragonite sand. Pufferfish are very intelligent creatures. Thus, they get bored quite easily. They love to explore, so they really appreciate cave-like structures and tank decorations such as plastic plants. If you wish to have more than one pufferfish in your tank, having caves and structures that can break their line of sight can help minimize aggression. Since we are keeping these guys in brackish water, our choice of live plants are quite limited. Most plants do not tolerate salt and will die off. The most recommended live plant for a brackish tank out there is java fern. Supposedly, they can thrive up to a specific gravity of 1.008. However, as you can see here, the java fern will not look as vibrant as if you were to keep them in fresh water. If you still wish to add some quote-unquote live plants into your aquarium, I highly recommend looking into macroalgae. Pufferfish are basically underwater hamsters. Like most pufferfish species, figure eight pufferfish require crunchy, meaty food in order to keep their teeth trimmed and short. Overgrown teeth will cause the puffer to not be able to eat, which will then lead to death due to starvation. If it comes to the point where your puffer's teeth is overgrown, you will need to trim its teeth down manually. Hence, good husbandry and a good diet is required for these little critters. I feed Gilbert a variety of food such as ramshorn snails, cockle, a piece of shrimp, gut-loaded earthworms, frozen bloodworms, and freeze-dried shrimps. A little note on krills, there seems to be a correlation between krills and lockjaw. Apparently, krills cause lockjaw in pufferfish. Unfortunately, I could not find any published articles or research papers on this particular topic, but through other people's experiences, this seems to be the case. Well, you can feed your puffers krill, but they should not be your puffers main diet. Maybe just as a treat once in a while. I do not recommend feeding them feeder fish as honestly, the cons overthrow the pros. Feeder fish are usually kept in very bad conditions, and they are very prone to diseases and parasites. Besides that, common feeder fish usually contain thiaminase, which will cause a thiamine deficiency. This will lead to many complications, so it is best to stay away from them. Of course, I do not feed all of these food in one sitting. I rotate Gilbert's menu around so he could get his nutrition from different sources. Also, just so he doesn't get bored with the same food every day. His main diet, however, should always be something crunchy, which in this case is ramshorn snails. Now, the next question is, how frequent do I feed my figure eight pufferfish? Currently with Gilbert, I do feed him once per day. I only feed him until his belly is slightly rounded. Every week, I will skip a meal's day and let him fast as it is good for his digestion. For adult figure eights though, it is recommended to feed them every other day. When it comes to pufferfish, tank mates are always a threat lightly, do it at your own risk thing. Although figure eight pufferfish are generally categorized as an aggressive fish, you really have to get to know your own personal fish as each pufferfish's personality can differ. Some might actually be more passive than others, and tank mates might scare them, or the other way round. So please proceed with your own best judgement. A few tank mates that have been recorded to have successful results are bumblebee gobies, sailfin mollies, and night gobies. Ensure you cater towards their needs as well. Any sort of invertebrates are not recommended. Figure 8 puffers are intelligent, active, and very curious creatures. They will recognize their owner's face or your feeding bowl over time. 
Generally, they are categorized as aggressive. Glass surfing is a sign that your puffer is either bored or stressed. A sleeping pufferfish will tuck its tail and sleep on the sand bed, in caves, or on any surface he or she likes. When it comes to colors, their colors do change to dull or bright according to their mood and according to the situation. When your puffer is sleeping, their color may look a bit dull. A happy pufferfish will have bright coloration with a white belly. When a figure eight is sick, they tend to turn a dark color. When they are full after a meal, their belly might turn a bit dark and they tend to rest on the sand bed. These are, of course, just a few examples. A common question I get is how do I know that my puffer is sick? Usually, they will have a strange behavior, odd activity or inactivity, coupled with dark and stressed coloration. If this happens, check your water parameters first. If your water parameters are good, then you can start ruling out diseases. Overall, figure eight puffers are a joy to keep and make very rewarding pets. I absolutely love them. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or ask us on Instagram or Facebook at Just Be Fishy. Please like and subscribe if you like to see more content, and please do comment down below as we absolutely love hearing your thoughts and reading your comments. Until then, see you next time.